is also important for brain health. And omega fatty acids are also important for brain health. Those can be helpful. That means the healthy start pack. You might want to throw in about 400 uh, 400 international units of vitamin E a day, and then zinc, which we've been talking about a lot, and we'll talk about it a lot tomorrow and for a couple of days. That also is important for mental health issues, for brain health issues, uh, and 50 milligrams of zinc is something that I would definitely be using uh, if I was dealing with schizophrenia or knew somebody who's dealing with schizophrenia. Zinc picolinate is the best form of zinc. So digestive health issues, the B-complex, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, vitamin E, the ultimate essential fatty acids, throw in some zinc, and see if you can notice uh, a connection between specific foods and schizophrenic symptoms. Now, she's on medication. She'll probably have those symptoms masked a little bit, but if you want to wean yourself off the medications, talk to your doctor about that, and then start using nutritional strategies, that might be something to think about. All right, lots you could do. And also, last but most certainly not least, the ketogenic diet, which is a low-sugar, high-protein, high-fat diet, or moderate-protein, high-fat diet. That might be helpful. And coconut oil has got some specific benefits for brain health and brain health issues. That helpful, Cliff? Yes, sir. I really appreciate it. God bless, man. Take care. Have a beautiful day in Ottawa, Canada. Okay, Arjan, I think you say? Arjan in New York? Yes, sir. Nice? Hey, what's up, Arjan or Arjan? How do you say oh, your name? Hi. Just like the way you say it. It's the correct way, Arjan. Arjan. Okay, yeah. good. How's huh? it going, man? Oh, just well. And uh, I've been listening to your show for several years, and I'm learning a lot from you. Oh, nice, nice. What's going on yes. today? How, how can I help you? Uh, the question is about the vitamin C, and... Um, I've been searching about the vitamin C and uh, used to take vitamin C, did not see any uh, benefits from it. I'm a total vegan for the last 12, 12 to 13 years. Okay. And I don't really take any supplements except maybe uh, krill oil. Okay. Um, about the vitamin C, I don't want to, you know, sidetrack it too much. I searched and I don't, I am not so sure if it is right or wrong that the way it's being made is not so great and that's why I began not to take it either. Like it's been derived from the corn. Yeah, yeah, it comes, that's corn. the main the main source of vitamin C, of supplemental vitamin C, or ascorbic acid, is corn. That's correct. And it is processed out of the corn. It actually comes mm -hmm. from sugar. It's, it, there's, the vitamin C molecule is actually very similar to the glucose molecule, at least from an organic chemistry standpoint. And anything that has a lot of sugar in it, and corn is loaded with sugar, is going right. to be a good a potential source of synthetic or a supplemental ascorbic acid. That's not to say it's, right. not a, it's not a good thing. Yes, it is synthetic, and it is come, you know, it's manufactured. But the fact remains that if you use ascorbic acid and you have a, a vitamin C deficiency, like scurvy disease, like scurvy, you can cure that scurvy with that synthetic vitamin C, with that synthesized vitamin C. Now, keep in mind, this is very important, Arjan, and everybody listening. You don't have to have full-blown scurvy. You could have subclinical scurvy to benefit from ascorbic acid. If ascorbic acid supplementation will cure scurvy, it sure as heck is going to cure subclinical scurvy. Well, what's subclinical scurvy? It is problems with your circulatory system, perhaps potential stress strokes, problems with your gums, problems with your bones, problems building things because collagen is a building protein and without ascorbic acid you can't make collagen. So we may not be suffering from full-blown scurvy where we're going to drop dead because we're hemorrhaging to death, but we may have a, a minor form of scurvy, what we say subclinical. It's not bad enough to, to force us to go to the doctor or force us to become hospitalized, but it's bad enough where it's leading to degenerative disease. Degenerative disease by definition, almost by by definition anyway, is disease that is caused by the body not building properly, and the main building protein is collagen. So almost by definition, not quite, but almost by definition, degenerative disease is scurvy, is a subclinical type of scurvy. It's a degenerative type of issue, and it's so tragic to avoid using ascorbic acid if we know that using ascorbic acid can reverse or heal scurvy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may not have full-blown yes, scurvy. I acknowledge what you're saying. Okay, I so have, you... Uh, you may have minor scurvy, not you. I'm not talking about you, Arjan, but right, somebody right. who's somebody's got osteoporosis. That could be a minor form of scurvy because the bone is largely composed of collagen. And you can take all the calcium you want, and you can take all the magnesium, all the minerals you want, but if you don't have enough ascorbic acid or vitamin C, your bones aren't going to be strong. And if you could take 100, 200, 500, 1,000 milligrams of ascorbic acid in a powder form, why would we not do it? What's the downside? What's the downside? Uh, uh, the other things that uh, when I search about the vitamin C, the way it was made, uh, it's, it seems like uh, it's being made most in China. And yes. one or two companies are making it. And yes. It goes into hydrogenation, yes. fermentation, All of, Well, no, no, it's not. 
Well, no? well, <laughs> the first half of what you said was right. Yes, it's made in third world countries, like vitamin, a lot of vitamins are, because they don't have the same rules and regulations, and they can manufacture yeah. them cheaper. A lot of the companies that make these vitamins, because of the heavy investment that's involved in the infrastructure and the factories and the machinery, et cetera, a lot of them are big multinational companies, and some of them are pharmaceutical companies. All of that is true. And I've said many times on this program and in my presentations, I hate the fact that we have created a planet where supplementation is necessary, but it is, and it does no, no good. It does no good to hand wring about it and to whine about it and to mope about it. The fact of the matter is, the stuff is not in the plants, or it's not in the soils. The minerals aren't in the soil, and this is another huge, huge problem that nobody's talking about except for Dr. Wallach. The soils are corrupted. There's no topsoil. There's no silt. That means the minerals, uh, the, the organisms are not in the soil. The minerals aren't in the soil. The plants don't have the vitamins. You can't get what you need from food. It's just not. It's not possible. To to get the kind of uh, uh, quantities and nutrient density that you need to, uh, to reverse degenerative disease from food alone. I wish that wasn't the case. It is. So to not use ascorbic acid because it's, it's made by the devil, if you will, it's made in the devil's workshop, it seems unfortunate to me. And that's just my opinion. If you don't want to stay away from ascorbic acid, God love you. God bless you. You know, Jesus loves us all. Would you like to know what I just had for uh, in the third day row? Yes. I would. Um, 16 ounces of uh, pure onion juice raw. Ah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Don't kiss your girlfriend yeah. or anything. You know, I used to do, I used <laughs> to do onion juice. Quickly. I used to do onion juice and garlic juice myself, and I love it. But uh, yeah. but no, if friends don't like it so much. I noticed. I know, but you know what happens? That your pH goes uh, to six and a half to seven. When, from the onion juice. For a long time. That's awesome. And you know what else? If you use some chlorophyll drops, that has a wonderful uh -huh. deactivating effect on the, on the odor from onion and garlic. Just plain chlorophyll uh, drops. Care. There you go. Oh, no care. <laughs> All right, Arjan. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I appreciate sure. it. All right. Uh, Jim in Virginia, what's going on? Got about a minute, unless you want to call back. Hey, Jim, I'm here. Um, hey. Have you ever heard of a Lomatia root? That's L O M A T I A. Yes, I have. It's a wonderful immune boosting, uh, immune boosting, uh, I guess, herb, you would say. Is that what you're going to talk about? Yeah, that's exactly it. I guess you're familiar with it. Um, with a bowl around, you just wonder if that might be useful. Absolutely it is. That's what I was talking about at the beginning of the program. I'll talk about it a little bit tomorrow. Herbs and plant material are loaded with wonderful, wonderful nutritional compounds, not the least of which are these polysaccharides, uh, such as beta-glucan, which we'll cover tomorrow. Thanks for your call. appreciate it. Uh, Jim, a lomatium root, L-O-M-A-T-I-U-M. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're in the Denver area, I would love to see you at the We Are Change Colorado uh, conference or We Are Change Colorado meeting this uh, at 7 p.m. tonight on Colfax Avenue in Lakewood. I'm trying to find, before we get off here, I'm trying to find the address, but I can't find it. So just Google uh, We Are Change Colorado, 7 p.m. today in Lakewood. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.